Okay, folks, so I'm happy to bring to you as my first series here on this uh, new Stewards of the Word Bible channel a look inside the new Thompson Chain Reference Bible by Zondervan Publishers. They recently bought it from uh, Kirk Bride, who was original publisher for, I think, over 100 years of publishing this actual Bible. And I want to talk about some of the things that... Um, I believe that it would probably be a good reason not to buy the new version if you're wanting that classic Thompson chain feel, look, and functionality as well. Okay, so what I've done is I've made a, an extensive list of notes in uh, this journal here. This is what I use for Bible studies. And we're going to go over today just the first set of notes that I have here. So I've got an extensive outline here of a lot of different topics, things like that we're going to be covering in this series. I expect it to be at least maybe a five to six video series, so I hope you're excited about that. So this is the Thompson Chain Bible that I've had for since 90, let's see, no one was this. I've had this Bible since 2012. And I want to show off before we get into the new one real quick, some of the Bibles that I've, some of the old Thompson Chains um, that I've come across over the years. Um, this is, I bought this, like I said, in 2012 in June. So I've had this Bible for uh, about 13 years now, almost 13 years. And it's well worn, as you can see. It's got that nice, the guild is kind of off of it. Um, there's places here where my thumb indents go into and in the back. And I've used uh, clear fingernail polish to actually get some of that you know kind of protected so that i don't have to worry about that i don't do as much uh, rubbing of any kind of oil or anything as i used to i haven't done this one in a long time um, but that's what it looks like it's nice and well worn in a lot of highlights and things like that in various places especially in the book of hebrews if i show you the book of hebrews here or even james james has got a lot of stuff here uh the book of hebrews has a lot of stuff Hebrews is, is probably my favorite book of the Bible. All right, so there's a lot of stuff in here. All right, so this is the one I've had since 2012. Now, if I go ahead and show you the one I had previous to this, I did a story on my Facebook, um, Facebook, uh, The Eric Beatty, and it's been a while back, so you have to search in my photo albums for it, but it's the story behind my old Thompson chain, my original one. You can barely see my name right there, um, and this is what it looks like today. So the, the binding was a different kind of leather, as you can see. It was more apt to break down. It's stiffer. It's, it's hard. It's not, you know, flexible like this is. Uh, cheaper quality leather for sure. Definitely a different burgundy color. But it got so bad that I had to put, you know, tape on this to hold it together. And back then I used um, blue colored pencil and blue pens and things like that to highlight my Bible. Uh, where I was talking about earlier about James, this is what I was referring to. A lot of this time stuff I'll go and copy over to my new Bible and it just got to be so much that I just went ahead and started from scratch. But this is my original one. This was bought in uh, 1997. So I've had this one for almost 20 years and it's been a good one and I've retired it since I found it. I lost it and then I found it and I've retired it ever since and it stays over here in my collection. And this is one... Even before that, this is what the old Thompson Chain boxes used to look like. Fifth Improved Edition and all the different things here. This is before they started going to the, the new rainbow colored ones with all the different things. I've got, I think I've got that old box of mine somewhere that uh, this one came in. I just couldn't locate it for right now. But this is what the, I remember this is what the original one looked like. So, and this is my dad's, one of his many old Bibles. And this one is... Uh, he handed this one down to me. He's, he had to tape his too. Um, definitely worn in. Some of the thumb and tabs are missing. He had to write down the ones that he was missing there. Um, but you can see he used red for the most part. He's got some old post-it notes and things like that in here. I mean, these are very, very popular Bibles. And they are for a reason. And they have been around for over 100 years now. So... Yeah, this one is the fifth original edition, and this is the one that he had, and it's well worn. So, that being said, I wanted to go ahead and get into some of the differences I'm finding here uh, in the new one that I don't think 
most of you hardcore Thompson Chain Bible um, users are not going to appreciate. I know I do not appreciate it, and uh, I can't believe how much they've left out of this one. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin starting with the cover page. Now, first of all, they have the new box, okay? And uh, this is the one that uh, I would not recommend. We may get on later on in the series. Um, the other one that I do recommend from them for now. But for now, the one that you want to look out for is the Comfort Print, okay? Comfort Print is the new one, the where they've completely redone all the, the things inside of it and a lot of the charts are missing, missing and things like that. So if you see Comfort Print, stay away from that one. I, that's my recommendation. This one is Thumb Index. Uh, this one I'm borrowing from my aunt, uh, Danny, and I appreciate her. I want to give her a shout out. appreciate her for letting me borrow this for this uh, video series. Um, we have what's called it, all these different things here as well that it has um, for this new edition. And it says it's burgundy leather soft. And if I open this up, it is indeed burgundy. It's, it's more of a dark brown burgundy, actually. It's, I mean, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty. Um, it kind of kept the same kind of logo there. It's a little smaller. I like the big one here like this. They kind of kept the same font, different things like that. Um, leather soft. It's not exactly real leather, but it does have that nice broken in already feel, well-worn feel. I love it as far as that, but that's about it, as much as I love it for, okay? So for very first thing we're going to go over, I'm going to re refer to my notes here. If we go over the cover page of both of these, okay? So I'm going to kind of side by side these, or mo uh, most likely on top of these, to uh, put them on top of each other. Let's go over the cover page here. Now this one I've had so long that it's uh, worn out like that. Now I'm pretty sure my dad's, as old as it is, has the same exact cover page. And I'm not going to be referring back to these cover pages in these other Bibles either. Because if it's the 5th improved edition, then it's the same exact thing here. Yeah, it's the same exact thing. So we're just going to keep referring to my current Bible that I'm using right now for that. But if we look at the cover page here, and I am curious, I want to see if my cover page over here is this worn. It's not, okay, so that's good. Um, yeah. So, cover page here. Different cover pages. Okay, first of all, I want to point out that uh, there's not near as many of these protective pages. See all these protective pages that you get? Okay, you can use them for notes or whatever. With this one, you get one. That's it. You get a presented to page, and maybe, and you can't even really write on the, write on the back of that one. Okay, so the cover page, going past this one, this one's a different, okay? So if I look at this, we have for the cover page, um, let's kind of go this line by line. Thompson Chain Reference Bible, Thompson Chain Reference Bible, King James Version, Old New Testaments, okay, fifth improved edition. Now notice they don't have an improved edition here because to me it's not approved, improved, for, but they wouldn't do that because of that. But it says revised and updated on the bottom here, but for me, uh, they don't have fifth and proof edition because they, since they uh, bought this company, um, they can't really call it the sixth and proof edition because it's not by the same company. Okay, I think that's exactly why they've not put whatever edition. It just says Thompson Chain Reference Bible revised and updated. Okay, so we've got this weird, I don't know what this right here means, if that's Zonderfin's logo or what. But here we have Thompson's Original Complete System of Bible Study. Thompson's Original Complete system of Bible study. This is not complete, by the way. This Bible does not have a complete system. A numerical system of chain references, analysis of books, outline studies of characters, unique charts, and pictorial maps. Okay. Notice the differences between that and what this says. A complete numerical system of chain references. So far, so good. Analysis of the books. Yes. Outline studies of characters. Yes. And unique charts. Yes. Okay. So, what we have here also that's not here, this is pretty much the same thing. On the back, on the bottom here it says to which has been added. Okay, so I don't know if it's the fifth improved edition or fourth improved when they actually added it. But it says to which has been added a new and valuable series of pictorial maps, archaeological discoveries, together with many other features. Okay, so pictorial maps here are in the back, pictorial maps in the back, but there's no mention here of many other features. And there's no mention of archaeological discoveries. There is no mention of archaeological discoveries in here because it's not in here. They took it out. Okay, so in the back here, there's an archaeological section, the tab right there. 
And if you pull to that tab, there's a whole archeological supplement, all right? I mean, it's several pages long and it's nice to have that. I mean, if you know, if there's something about a city in the Bible, you have it right here as your reference. I mean, it's nice to have that because if you're on the go, this is, once again, if you know this or you don't, this is basically a Bible that's for com completely um, designed, from what I've heard, designed for ministers, okay, for preachers, so that they can have a complete system here at their fingertips and not have to have all these other um, uh, concordances and uh, archaeological supplement things and everything in, in a bunch of different books. They have those four just in the Bible here. So that's worth noting is that it's nice to have. Now their reason for that, they said that it's um, a lot of it is outdated and they didn't want to include it. And to my argument is that, okay, it's outdated, but you can still include it because it's still helpful. Okay. And you could always say, okay, this is outdated. Please reference more, you know, new material or thing like that. To me, it's still a very helpful thing. I don't understand why you would remove it. Okay. It's not, once again, it's not a complete system in this new one. Okay. Originally compiled and edited by Frank Charles Thompson. By the way, the fifth improved edition, I'm not exactly sure. If I look at a copyright page, which should be back here, previous editions, this was 19, I guess 1988. This is the 28th printing, 2010. 1988, it was in the 5th approved edition. So this stuff probably where it says to which has been added was added to the 5th approved edition, which is now since 1988, they've, they've had these Bibles that we have today. I mean, they've had the 5th approved edition out since 1988. So really, there's no reason that um, you would say, I would think so, that you would say, let's go ahead and cut some of this stuff out because it's been there since 1988, right? So it's been faithful since then. Let's continue on. This says, Frank Charles, compiled and edited by Frank Charles Thompson, okay, uh, DD, PhD, archaeological, archaeology, archaeology, if I can speak, by G. Frederick Owens, DD, ED, all these uh, degrees and everything. That's the archaeological supplement, okay? Um, another thing it does not have, self-pronouncing text. You will not find self-pronouncing text in this Bible. Everything is as it is. You can't find, if you want to know how to pronounce these names, tough luck. You don't have self-pronouncing text to tell you what the vowels and everything are supposed to sound like. Okay? It's not there. Uh, if I scooch a little further, um, let's see, I think it's a few pages over here where it tells me. Yeah. Key pronunciation and proper names. So we have all these vowels and everything listed that we can tell what what the names are and how to how to pronounce them. It's not in this Bible. Okay, it's not in there. All right. So if I go back, cover page. Ed, expanded by John Stephen Jalkin, T M T H M PhD religion editor. I haven't had time to look this up, but who is he? And is he a credible source? I'm sure he is. I'm not down on the man. I don't even know him. I just know that, okay, there's one guy that expanded this whole thing versus, you know, I mean, how, how do you know that what he's, what he's doing here is if he's, you know, credible, if he's reliable. So, I mean, I don't know about that, but I mean, that's something I would definitely check into, research this guy, see what he, you know, what he thinks, he, you know, to the Bible and everything, how he stacks up with it. Now revised and updated another thing here. Let's see anything else. This is just the publisher, Kirk Bride, and now it's Zonervan, okay? Um, by the way, Zonervan, I don't want to say anything bad about them, but I do know that they have a Bible for everything that you need. I mean, they are loads of Bibles out there for college students, for teenagers, for this, for that. They're like the chicken soup for the soul of Bibles, okay? Because they have a smorgasbord of every Bible you want. We're going to get on in a little bit about the translations and stuff like that, but this says King James Version, right? Okay, so let's keep going. Let's see if there's anything I missed on my notes here. I think there was one more edition. They had an, a 100th anniversary edition. I think it was probably back in 2008. How many ever years from, well, 1908, so it was probably 2008. Uh, they had a 100th anniversary edition, and I'm not sure if they labeled that 6th edition or not. I don't think they did. They could have. But as far to my knowledge is we've only made it up to the fifth approved edition, fifth improved edition for the uh, Thompson chain we had today. 
But yeah, it does say here, fifth improved edition. This does not say anything about being improved at all. There, just says updated. Uh, once again, what I said about Zonovan, you can look them up, research them. So w let's continue moving forward. We're going to go to the copyright page now. The differences I know on the, notice on the copyright page, we have, I mean, you can just look some of this up for yourself. They have the same dates, Thompson Chain uh, Reference System Zondervan copyright. So they bought all the copyrights and everything. 1908, same dates. And then 1988, 2022 is when they actually came out with this, this, uh, this Bible. This is the, um, yeah, 2022. I think 2023 is when they, well, 2021 seems like it's when they bought it out, or maybe 2020 they bought the company out and they uh, went ahead and published uh, a, a, an original edition first, and then they went to this comfort print edition. Okay, so we have anything different here? All rights reserved. Oh, no, no reproduction. 28th printing here. They both carry the chain reference, although on different pages. To register trademark here, now it's trademark of Zonervan. Uh, notice this, over 3.9 million copies of the Thompson Chain Reference Bible, KJV, from previous editions, previous editions are in print. No, there's nothing listed about that here. But there's one thing, I want, a couple things I wanted you to notice here, at least one that I know of. This says the Bible's interior design was created by Zion experts at 2K Denmark. Okay, who is 2K Denmark? Who are they? Are they a Christian company? Are they a company that represents the Word of God well? I mean, I don't, I mean, as far as like the, the font of a Bible, which is basically, this is the font here. The Bible was set in the Thomas Nelson KGB typeface, also created at 2K Denmark. Uh, yeah, a font really isn't going to make any difference whether they're credible or not, but they created the whole interior design. Who is 2K Foundry in Denmark? Who is 2K in Denmark? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who these people are. So I don't know if that's worth looking into or not. And just the Thomas Nelson KJV typeface. I don't know when they first came out with that. I'm pretty sure this is not the typeface they use in the second edition of the Thompson Chain Study Bible. I mean the um, King James Version KJV t uh, Study Bible. I'm pretty sure it's not the same font. It could be. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. So let's continue on. Now let's go to the contents page. So we have these top sections here, and we'll compare these a little further on as we go, okay? So as I turn the pages here, you're going to see what I mean. I'm not even going to worry about looking at over these right now. We have the books of the Old Testament, Old Testament books here. We have the abbreviations right here on the side. Um, as far as the abbreviations, they are not here. I think they're, they're mentioned later on, probably. I think towards the, towards the back of the Bible, I'm not sure. Oh, actually, they are right there. They're right here on the side. I didn't see them. Second Chronicles. It's a little bit, I don't know if that's easy to read, but I mean, it's kind of separate here. I actually labeled mine 1 through 38 and then 40 through, or 1 through 39 and then 40 through 66 here so that I can know what book is what. Um, contrast between the Old and New Testaments. Chart showing the contrast between the Old and New Testament. And we have New Testament stuff here, New Testament stuff here. Comprehensive Bible helps see the following page, and it's also on page 1503. Okay, so that is um, the contrast between the Testaments page. I don't know if I go over that later. Yes, I do go over that later. So we'll get on that later on. But as we flip the page here, we go into the Comprehensive Bible Helps page. Now, this is one of the main huge differences I see so far. I'm glad they included it on the front because not a lot of people know that it's there so as we have this the comprehensive bible helps okay so the layout is nice it's friendly okay but we have quite a bit less than what we have in here there is a lot missing from this new thompson chain okay so we have principles of bible study and i'm not going to go over all these right now because it's it's just too much uh we're going to go we're gonna kind of piece by piece a lot of this stuff so you have Numerical, alphabetical index, principles of Bible study, best methods of study, uh, general index here. Um, this is actually supposed to refer to what comes after the text of the Bible, after Revelation. That's why we have page 1328. We're only on the, the introductory pages here. And it comes way after because everything on this page comes after the main text where the actual notes are listed. Okay, so we have principles of Bible study. There. That's where they're going to include that and a lot of this other stuff. 
prominent characters. We have different charts here that are missing. We have a whole thing, and I'm going to go into those later. Uh, we don't have seven editions of the Vine Law. The historical bridge isn't in there. The books of the Apocrypha isn't there, as far as like a chart on those. Um, Origin and growth of the English Bible is not there. Chart of Menesanic Sars, Temple of Truth. All that's gone. It's not in here. Okay. Uh, we have some character studies. We do have some character studies in here. Um, there's character studies there. There's also some other charts. Walls of separation in Romans. Chart on the cause of Babylonian captivity. All that stuff's missing. Character studies are here. We have prominent characters. The Old and New Testament. Some of that stuff is here. Uh, they do have apparently Messianic prophecies and their fulfillments, which is also in here. It's a little different laid up. We also have Bible harmonies, illustrated studies. Okay, so for Bible characters, they've got three things. Bible characters, we've got this whole thing here. This, a bunch of this is missing. Bible harmonies, illustrated studies, journeys on Abraham, journeys of Abraham, overview of most of life. They've completely removed the trees, the hand-drawn trees of Moses, Jesus, and so the other ones, so many of the other ones' life. Uh, Journeys in the Life of Gideon, Samuel, Saul, that's in here. But they've removed the illustrations of the actual maps where you can see the little characters. If you're familiar with that, continue to watch this series and you'll see what I'm getting at because this is just a quick overview of what, they're, what they've removed here, what they're missing. This is the biggest section here and we can also see it's the biggest section here. Okay, So a lot of this stuff is here. Some, uh, Most of it, a lot of it is not here. Some very important things are not here. Um, we have Hebrew times and seasons and festivals here. The concordance, which is back here. Now, they leave off, like I said, the archaeological supplement. And they also leave off the glossary of archaic King, King James Version's words. And that is a big disappointment too, in my opinion. Because it helps so much to define some of these words that you're coming across. I don't know if they define those in the margins. I may uh, have looked those up earlier and we may go over that. But the archaeological, I mean, the uh, concordance supplement is not there. Yes, those words, you can tell me those words are outdated, but the, the point is that you have a glossary to tell you what it is, and you can study it for yourself. That that keeps you from having to lug around, like I said, a concordance in a, a Hebrew and Greek text and all this stuff. That's a good, real quick overview of these words and what they mean. Uh, and not necessarily the Hebrew mentioned, but the the way that the English, the old-style English, 1611 English, uh, defines a lot of this stuff. So that's not in there. Um, we have colored Bible maps back here. And that's what these are. There's a map index. Obviously, you've got a map index at the front of the cover, uh, color, color Bibles here. So a lot of this stuff is missing. Um, so if we go and we continue on here, uh, we just had the comprehensive health helps Bible pages. There's no illustrations there in, in all these uh, areas that they're talking about and there's no what i call a link showing christ between the testaments now when we get to between the testaments and the new the new testament we, we should see some of that but i'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick if i go to matthew here i'll come back this is still there in matthew but it is not showing christ as the link now that's not, maybe you can call that nitpicky if you want to but look at this look at this beautiful illustration and then we have a chart. Okay, so we have Christ here, but, I mean, what does this mean? You have 400 silent years, okay, we have that happening. That's written right here as well. But Christ, why is he here? What's, what does that mean? Here it cl plainly shows you he is the link between the Old and the New Testaments. Contrast between the Testaments. Contrast between the Old and the New Testaments, okay? So, as we keep going here, now we're going to go on to the intro pages, okay? Introductory pages. All right, so now we have the intro pages here and immediately see uh, another difference here, the Thompson Chain Reference Bible Introduction and Explanation of How to Use It. That does not come in here until later on. Practical advantages of this Bible. That's where I would compare that, okay? So we're beginning with Introduction and Explanation of How to Use It. Um, it's the most complete and unique topical reference Bible in print. Um, which enables the student to follow a single biblical topic from Genesis to Revelation. Now, there's, I don't, I'm not going to read all this because, I mean, you can kind of read it for yourself uh, as, you, as if you pick one of these up in stores. Uh, but it says, the many uh, study tools in the back section called the 
uh, called Comprehensive Bible Helps allow this Bible to be adapted to all types of study and presentations. Um, it is a uh, the Thompson Training Reference Bible's exhaustive features and practical helps make it a virtual mini library. It was designed. Uh, it is designed for individual and group study for young and old alike, whether to use for devotional reading, teaching children, preparation of Sunday school material, preaching, or for any other Bible study aim. Students who love the Word of God will find this Bible easy to use and ready to bring a deepened understanding to spiritual truth. Okay, so here's the preference to it, and this talks about the 1988 edition, fifth improved edition. Okay. Um, it gives you some more details here. And this is kind of like that. It's not as detailed as the, the next couple of pages over. But this is from the publisher. So this this may be closer to this page than the one that I just showed you. Okay, so if we continue on here, we have the revised and updated edition. Okay, so the revised and updated edition. Here's some things they list. The two indexes were re renamed. So the two indexes they're referring to are the a to Z chain index and the um, the actual chain index. A to Z index and the actual chain index, which this would be considered the num numerical portion. This would be considered the alphabetical portion, okay? So that's what this says. The two uh, indexes are renamed to better reflect their function and thus facilitate their use. New names have been given to the primary indexes. Okay, so it kind of explains that. Uh, completed chains. The previous editions contain many incomplete study chains, which have now been reviewed for consistency and expanded to include verses from both the Old and New Testaments. So they've completed some of the chains. Uh, complete listing of references. Many marginal references in earlier editions were not listed in the numerical index of topics previously known by different names. Now all marginal references are listed there. Those references cited in red print represent the chain verses prominent verses that may be traced from beginning to end within the text using the topic number. Um, so they said they've completed the list of chains. And I'm wondering if they're referring to later on, we'll go over the special Bible readings and the addenda. Okay, so that may be what they're referring to is combining all that together because those aren't in this Bible e either. And that may be why previously known by different names, they were known uh, by different names. But we'll go over that when we get to it. Inclusion of all topics in the margins. Many of the topics of the old editions were not included in the margins due to the space limitations. Now, through advanced data analysis, composition layout, and new printing techniques, all topics are found in the margin. The NM, not in margin abbreviation of previous editions, has been eliminated. So, if it's not on margin, it usually had an NM for that, and now they're saying, okay, that's been eliminated. Everything is included on the, I mean, um, on the margins. Consistent names of topics. Because Dr. Thompson's notes were originally noted in the margin by hand, and a little emphasis was placed on consistency. For example, one topic, 884, appears in early works as creator, creator, God, as, and God, creator. One consistent title is now given to each numerical topic. In case, in this case, topic 884 is always found as creator. And they also have the book introduction. Now, this is one thing that I do like that they have done. And they basically move the book introductions to the beginning of each book. If you'll look in Genesis here, for example, and all these are about the same, there is analysis of the book is always in the back where the notes are. It's more helpful if it's here. I will say that and I will agree that that is a better use of that. It's all stacked together in the back on the analysis of the books. For example, if I go to 4223, which is the number that it gives me here, it's pretty far back. And I have to go all the way back here just to find it. 4223, 4223, and here we go. Outline studies or analysis of the books of the Bible, book of Genesis. I mean, this is good in the sense that, yes, you can go through all these and kind of get a, a, an overview, but I don't know anybody that really does that. So it's better to have it in the front like they've listed it. So that is, that is a good thing. That's basically what they're saying here. Now, here's the one I wanted to pay attention to. Other minor revisions, especially the comprehensive Bible helps, have been included to reflect updated scholarship and are based on consumer use patterns discovered through market research. Market research, okay. Well, one of the ladies from Zonovan, um, if I can remember, if I can find it, I'll link that video here. Uh, she had an interview with um, a guy who was kind of asking her these questions and she gave an overview of what the new edition is about and the only thing that I can remember her mentioning was they used their Facebook group to find out what they wanted to do and what things that they would like to see and all this I don't remember her saying that they used anything else but she definitely mentioned the Facebook group and I'm thinking what kind of market research is a Facebook group I mean 
it says here based on consumer use patterns okay consumer use pattern how many people actually use the thompson chain like it is and in the way that it is who would vote and who would suggest some of the crazy changes they've made in here um, some people and that's one of the reasons they said that they removed the archaeological supplements because that's the least used feature in the thompson chain bible is the archaeological so we'll just remove it I don't agree with that because it's a very helpful resource. Yes, you might not have used it, but I mean, I use it. I use it whenever something comes up and I need to know these things. So yes, I use that, all right? So I don't know of anybody who loves the Thompson chain that does not use just about everything that's in there and would like to have it in there, okay? So all these changes have been maintained the highest respect of preserving the tradition Dr. Thompson and the chain reference study system has developed yeah that that just kind of shocked me that their market research the main one that they mentioned was facebook groups of all things okay so here's the next page um, understanding the margins indexes and many other bible helps okay so for one thing you'll notice is that it says a topic number okay this is kind of i don't know maybe semantics uh, but the topic number is not used in this Bible. If I flip over here to the next page over in the original 5th uh, and Brother edition, it's called the pilot number. The pilot number on the margins of the Old Testament and the New Testament was made to furnish a more rapid method of study of the Scriptures. Continuity of the chains and passing from the Old to the New Testament is unbroken. Also, the pilot number enables the reader by a single turn from the margin to the comprehensive helps. That's basically the chain index it used to be called helps there's other bibles that call it helps that's what it's talking about um, to find the complete reference chain or other information desired now i like the use of the word pilot number because that kind of to me it's the the main number the start number that you need to find this chain topic number is what it's using here i don't consider that you know a big offense or anything like that but i just wanted to point that out they don't call it the pilot, pilot number anymore they call it the topic number and they kind of explain that uh, chain verses, they talk about that. They talk about the forward reference and how uh, the beginning of the verse in the margin and the beginning of the verse in the chain is, is marked with a forward-facing triangle and the last chain is denoted by a square symbol, which to me is kind of redundant. I mean, you don't need it because once you get to the second, uh, the second reference in the chain, you don't know what the first reference is anyway unless you're actually starting at the first reference. So you're still going to have to go to the very back to find what the first reference is. This is kind of pointless to me. Parallel passages, that's definitely something, parallel PP, that's what that means. That's also in the Thompson chain here. Number in parentheses refers to a subdivision of the topic. That's also in here, parentheses numbers. So we have parallel passages here, forward references. Uh, the reference printed at the right of a topic is called a forward reference. And this here, it says the forward reference um, the reference cited with the topic of the margin indicates the next text of the chain. When topics are found with no forward reference, the student knows that while that particular verse contains a topic, it's not been included within the chain. Um, different abbreviations here. Chain not on margin, not on margin, chapter verse. Uh, number in parentheses refers to subdivision. Same thing here. Okay, so there's what we have there. There's no listing here. Like I said, they don't have a glossary. So there's no listing to obsolete and archaic words in the King James Version. That number's always been 4452. So if, whenever you see the number 4452 within the Thompson chain, that always means go to the glossary. For example, the word meat, 4452, means go to the glossary. Okay, so that's at Exodus 16, 18. So if I go to Exodus 16, 18, what does it tell me to do here since they don't have a glossary? That's very curious. Let's find out. Exodus 16, 18. 16, 18. When they did meet it with an omer. No definition of what the word meet means. Okay, not there. How are you going to know what that means? Unless you go to the glossary or you sit here and you chain reference that whole thing out in a concordance. Okay, so that is a very helpful tool, and they did not include it, and that disappoints me in the new Thompson chain. And that's not even the least of it, okay? So we're going to continue on here. If you'll look at something else that's here, okay, well, we're, we're still on the um, 
the understanding of the text and the margins. So if we flip over here, uh, does it have that here? I think there's a few more here. Yeah, it may be uh, doing some of these as well. So there's indexes. The first thing they had here was margins. And then here they have indexes. I understand the indexes is found, found uh, foundational to the effective use of the K of the Thompson Register Bible. So the indexes here, they're talking about in the back, the alphabetical index of topics and the numerical index of topics. They're just talking about the subdivision. I kind of went over that earlier when the, uh, the things that were revised and updated section. So we got these two indexes, the alphabetical and numerical. Okay, they're talking about that and other Bible. There's Bible character studies, Bible harmonies, and illustrated studies. They're kind of going over that. We have some abbreviations and spe special markings here. There's some uh, as well over here uh, to kind of see what, what these mean. But I want you to notice here that uh, is very interesting. Before we go to that though, I want you to notice something that's not in here. And that is the analytical and synthetic method system of Bible study. Okay, so that's not in here. What is in here is, like I said before, principles of Bible study. Okay. That is in there, and that's also in this one. That's in the back. If you go to before the AZ index tab, if you go one page over, there's a comprehensive Bible helps again, and here's the principles of Bible study. That's what they're talking to there. I mean, what they're talking about there. But they don't have the analytical and synthetic method of Bible study here. Talk about how to study it as uh, the analytical, studying the Bible as a whole, analysis of the books, chapters, verses, biographical, topical, and things like that, and the synthetic method, method um, it's a counterpart of that. And the former divides the whole scriptures into parts for general examination. That's the analytical. The synthetic assembles the verses relating to one subject into a chain or harmonizes the scattered material referring to one important theme. So we're going to talk about one important theme here and how to kind of study that. Here we have a condensed encyclopedia of topics and texts. Great themes contrasted, archaeology, these are some that go along with the synthetic method. Okay, so once again, the practical advantages of this Bible, it doesn't, this is left out. It kind of shows you uh, how to use it here, understanding it and all that. But after how to use it, we have it right here. Okay, so practical advantages, how to follow chain, book study, all this. Um, so it's it's also saying here, about themes and about studying books and chapters okay so this is kind of can represented a little bit in this page how to use chain reference bible because it talks about studying a book studying a chapter analysis of books allow us a chapter themes that's the synthetic method we just talked about uh, passage and verse okay bible personalities that's uh, biographical so they're, they're kind of combining it there it's not exactly the same thing it may be laid out a little bit better i'm not sure but I, I guess I'll give him credit for kind of including it there. But uh, this other thing, like I said, how to follow chain, suggestiveness, book study, chapter study, that's kind of wrapped up in that as well. So they've condensed that down. But to me, I still like all this extra information that I can use if I need to. Because so we have pronunciation. Like I said, this does not, it's not self-pronunciation. Um, this kind of tells you uh, there's more than a century of rich biblical, biblical tradition. But as I said, we're going to go back to this page. Kind of getting ahead of myself here. Something else I wanted you to notice. Let me go ahead and refer to my notes again. On the abbreviations page, um, it's originally in the glossary, which is, like I said, an easy way. Now, I'll also link a video here uh, to where you can go to where I actually talked about how to navigate the Thompson Jane Bible. Now, once again, since this stuff is so changed in this Bible, it, the, all those tools don't apply to this because, except for maybe the thumb index, but even then, the references and things have changed so dramatically that a lot of it's off. And that method of study will only work with the traditional, original, you know, fifth improved edition of the Thompson chain. But it talks about navigating. And one of the things I was going to say was if you go to the concordance and flip backwards one, that's your glossary. Okay. So this abbreviations page was originally included in the glossary. And now since they don't have a glossary, <laughs> it's not there. Okay. So we have archaic adjective adverb. Uh, all these other things and some of these other things here. Uh, some of these aren't that I can find aren't really mentioned, I don't think, that I can find. Um, but one other thing I want to point out about this is that this is King James Version. Remember we talked about that at the very beginning. King James Version, bold text. 
Why then, if this is King James Version, do they have references to the New International Version and the New American Standard Bible? Answer me that. Do they have some of those in the footer, in the liner notes? If so, why? I mean, for one thing, the NASB and NIV, if, if, as far as I know, are taken from different manuscripts completely. I've done a lot of study and research on a lot of this stuff and read a lot of authors and things about that, about so much that they do with the new versions that it's not even funny. It's it's basically blasphemous and secular what they do with these new versions. One of them is that, um, I think it's uh, West Cotton Hort is one of the um, texts that they use. And another one is the one that was in the Vatican, but the Vatican, it was found in the trash can. So if it wasn't good enough for the Catholics, it shouldn't be good enough for anybody else, right? I mean, why would you use something that was tr thrown away and use that as your text of the Bible? So there's a lot of these other uh, modern translations using completely different texts than the Textus Receptus. Okay, and, the, and I think what's called the Masoretic Text. But anyway, and also another thing is the New American Standard Bible. The NASB was rejected by its founder, Frank Lockhart, I think is his name. If you look this up, there's an awesome website called av1611.org, which means Authorized Version 1611. av1611.org, I think it has audio of Frank Lockhart. I think it's maybe his name, I don't know. But it's the NASB founder, I think. He basically on audio... It was is recorded that he rejected this translation of the Bible. Yet it's still in print today. I don't understand that at all. And why would you have that in with the King James Version? It does not make sense. Okay, so that's just something to be wary of there. Now we see that there's many more abbreviations than this one. Like I said, I don't know if they, they've added more stuff because some of this stuff is not in that abbreviation page that I was telling you about earlier. Now, there's one thing that you may encounter and you may have a question about. Well, what about um, the 5th Improved Edition? It talks about a revised version. And on the, on the uh, margins, yes, it is, does reference from time to time revised version. And that is just to, um, I think, define certain words, clarify certain words. Now, for me, I don't really use that um, because the more you study the Bible, the more it makes itself known to you, the more it makes sense. Uh, I don't agree with the revised version being even anywhere near any other versions near the King James Bible because it is it is the uh, uh, version unto itself. But also, that leads me to the question, though, when was the revised version put in? Was it put in on the original edition? Because in the revised version, it didn't come out. Actually, I think it did come out before uh, the 1908. I think it came out like 1800s or something. If I do a real quick look up on that. Yeah, the revised version came out in 1881 to 1884, so he apparently had that to look at uh, before, uh, by he, I mean Frank Thompson, the, the basically inventor, I guess, the founder of the Thompson Chain Bible. But like I said, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. That may have been in all the versions, but it's not heavily coded throughout the Bible. I'll just tell you that right now. It's not in there a lot. I hardly ever find it myself. Okay, so let's, let's continue here. Okay, a couple more things here, and then we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Basically, one of the things I might mention later, and I can't remember if I do, but I wanted to make that prominent. Earlier on, we talked about how these reference numbers are in red. See how we have, we have red here, red, red, red. And the ones that aren't in red are not in the chain. Uh, something like that, they said. Then we got red here, red there. A lot of red in the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament. To me, I don't like that because traditionally red is the uh, letters of the Bible that Jesus spoke, right? It's the words that Jesus spoke. And if we go to the red letter edition, if I go to somewhere like Matthew 5, which has three, four chapters of the Beatitudes, all this is red, okay? So we have the topic separated in red, right? We have all this red. We have all these references as red. To me, why couldn't they make these and all this red here? Why couldn't they make that gray? Uh, maybe it wouldn't have uh, turned out in print as good, but it still needs to be something besides red. Because for one thing, these numbers are not inspired. They're not words of Jesus. And that needs to be reserved for the words of Jesus, in my opinion. So any topics or anything like that should be like gray. I mean, if anything, you can tell the difference between gray and black easily. So I, I don't know why they would do that, but that's kind of a pet peeve of mine there. And the last thing I'll go over 
is as we get to the first book of Genesis, or the first book period, we have no, what's missing here is, you may have already seen this, there's no river of inspiration here. Okay, that's not here. You'll find in this Thompson Chain Bible here, there are no hand-drawn illustrations from the uh, original editions here. And that's really, a, really a sad thing because it becomes so much more live when you're reading these and when you're seeing how this kind of comes apart and, and kind of happens. Another thing that this is helpful with is that it, it shows you the divisions of the actual Bible books. We have, if we go to the Old Testament, we have the Pentateuch, then we have the history books, then we have poetry, and then major prophets, and then minor prophets, then we have history in Matthew through Acts, we have Pauline epistles, we have general epistles, and we have Revelation all to itself, uh, which would be, you know, kind of like uh, prophecy. So, I want that's what I want to go over in this just first video. I've got these uh, um, divided into different videos, and I may decide to do the rest of the videos in 1080 HP because this is actually taking up a lot of space on the the only two memory cards that I have uh, in 4K. So we may just do that. I like the fact with 4K you can zoom in and you can still see good stuff. We'll see how it goes. I'll review these videos and we'll kind of see from there. So. Uh, if you like this, please comment in the video here. Tell me what you think about it, how you use the Thompson Chain Bible, what you like about it. Uh, if you use this new one, what you think about it, please keep it family friendly. This is a Bible channel, so obviously no profanity, no foul language. I will have to block you or remove the comment or flag or whatever if there's foul language or anything like that. All right, so please keep it friendly. Keep this channel Christian, all right? That's what I'm asking. Okay, so thanks so much. Uh, Hit, a, hit that like button for me if you would. Please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of these. And uh, there will be more of these coming as soon as I can put them up. Like I said, there's going to be probably about five or six videos in this whole series. And also check the videos and the, the, the uh, links below. And some of the videos that I may leave here on the end screen uh, so that you can refer to some of these. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. God bless and keep being a steward of the word.